Hello everyone, welcome to the Game Design Perspective. I'm Santi and today I'm actually really excited to talk about this. I think lately we have talked a lot about controversy, at least myself. I've talked about, about what Microsoft is doing, what I've heard they are doing and other controversies. But I think this episode, I want it to be a happy one. I, I want it to be more interesting than just talking controversy. The reason we started this channel actually is to share me and Mao's experience as designers in the video game industry. And, and in my case, going through AAA to AA to Indie and now going to IO Interactive, right? So what is my experience there? And specifically in this ep episode, I want to bring the experience of what is it like to your job being at risk while the industry was crashing and still is and looking for a job and then going through that process, right? So while I was at Twin Sons, for reasons I cannot fully disclose today, hopefully one day I'll be able to, I had to leave. Now so everybody, most of us in the studio had to leave. So I started looking for a job and in the process, there were two companies that I was really excited and they were running like through the process. And that was IO Interactive. And the only one was Larian Studios, both here in Barcelona. They have, both of them have studios here. And Larry, I happened to pass the first two interviews with Larian Studios and then they sent me a design scientist. So the designers in Larian are called something called RPG designers. And the reason they're called that is because they have to be jack of all trades. There is no specialization in combat design or level design. If, if you go to a work company, job postings or, or in LinkedIn, you will find that sometimes they separate them. They focus people in combat design or in level design or, or just game design, system design. Here, well, that's not the case. I would like to preface that saying this is like one of the hardest tests I've ever made. And in order to pass it, you need to be an RPG savant. And what I mean by that is that you DM a lot D&D and you know D&D to heart. You don't just follow your, the campaigns, you make your own campaigns. And not just that, you have experience in the video game industry. So it's an incredibly small pool of people. But everybody is kind of excited about Larian Studios lately, right? So I think they told me that for this position, they had 2,000 2, people applying and they think that I, 40 people got the test and only two passed the test. It's a difficult process, but that doesn't stop me from talking about the test in broad terms, you know, in big brush strokes. I cannot give you the exact details, but we can talk about it. So the test is divided in situation design, level design, systems and balancing, narrative design and combat design. So let's go through each one. So I actually have the test right here. And the situation design starts with an actual map from Baldur's Gate. So they will give you a situation in Baldur's Gate 3 and they would ask you to create an encounter in that area. You have to take in consideration like the actual story of the area, which means that you need to know Baldur's Gate 3. And you need to take in consideration all the, the consequences of the player. You have to think as a DM creating a D&D &D encounter. So this is not necessarily a combat encounter, but it's also not necessarily just a narrative. Is like in a specific blockade that the player encounters. And as an RPG, as a CRPG, how do you overcome it? So you need to think of so many reasons and consequences and you have to think as a DM. The next one was level design. Here, the questions get a little bit more specific. In this case, they will give you a situation and you need to use the RPG mechanics to solve it. So if you played Baldur's Gate, you think of the goblin camp. So they, they give you the situation of the goblin camp and then you have to come up with the whole environment around it, right? All the side quests, how they have side quests within the area, what is the main quest in the area, how do you overcome the main quest, how do you tackle that main quest in different situations, right? If you fulfill certain side quests inside the, the situation itself, in certain think again, think of the goblin camp, right? How did you approach the goblin camp? Uh, did you free the bard inside? Did you not, you know? Everything, everything like that. So they are asking you to create a situation like a level design environment like that. It's fascinating. But again, if you don't know Baldur's Gate, you have no chance. <laughs> then comes systems design and balancing. So this part for me was the most difficult. And you need to trust 
your skills in math, statistics and algebra specifically. Why? That section of the test, the whole thing is about creating formulas for each aspect of the game. For example, create a formula that calculates the limited encounters, that takes the limited encounters of an act in Baldur's Gate 3, and then makes sure that the progression still fits with 60% of them being completed. So finding 60% of the combat encounters will give you enough experience to progress, but if you completed them all, you're still not overpowered which means what is the scalability of the experience gain and how does it work, right? So you need a math formula for it. So this is where your math is like, your math skills come, come to play, right? And then the other one would be like, what is the probability of certain items being given to you, right? Or how do you change the loot of a certain encounter depending on the probability of getting certain items or if you had this item or not? So you need to calculate that and it's a very, very math intensive test. Uh, again, I cannot show it to you specifically. I need to speak broad, but I think this puts in perspective, right? So think you have 10 chests and you want the probability of finding an item to be specifically this, you know, out of 10 items, right? And the probability changes depending on how many chests you open, for example. So that kind of stuff. And you need to give them the math formulas for this. Next is narrative design. So they tested your level design. They tested your encounter design. They tested your math skills. And now they're testing if you can write. Are you a writer? So in this case, they're going to give you probably like a character or something, a situation in Baldur's Gate, and then you have to continue the story of this character in a quest line. So how do you incorporate the character and the player's choices into the story of this character, right? So it's not just writing who this character is, it's also writing how the player can affect this character. So they're testing if you can write your original characters or unique characters or weird or interesting personalities. And if you know uh, character arcs and stuff like that. So it's a very complete individual already. And finally, they test your combat design. Baldur's Gate doesn't necessarily approach combat as other, like, for example, a Souls game or turn-based Japanese RPG or... No, the Baldur's Gate, at least Larian Studios, and the, the, their philosophy is that they approach combat as a puzzle. What is a puzzle? How do you solve it? So you have combat mechanics, and then the combat encounters give you a specific puzzle, which is why the combat encounters, and in the test before it says it, the combat encounters are limited. There's a certain amount of encounters. There is no grinding in Baldur's Gate 3, if you think about it. So based on that, each counter is curated and it's a specific puzzle. So here they tell you, hey, so give us a combat encounter. That gives you a unique puzzle and how that puzzle can be solved in different ways and stuff like that. So what is the uniqueness of it? You, again, you have to keep D&D &D and Baldur's Gate 3 in the back of your head at all times, right? If you're using the environment, if you're not, what is the combination of enemies? What is the synergy of that, of those enemies that give a unique, you know, puzzle? If there is environmental hazards, for example, how can the player use them? How can the player prevent falling into them? So this, all these, and this, I talked in my previous review of Baldur's Gate 3, this is one of the things that I plot the most and is how the level design always matters in combat encounters in Baldur's Gate. It always matters. And that's not always the case. Even in the case of tactics games, let's say Final Fantasy Tactics, which I adore, the level design is not that complex. It gives you specific hazards and stuff like that, but is usually a choke point and that's it, or elevation and that's it, right? If Baldur's Gate goes far beyond that, far, far beyond that, you know, from multiple elevations, hazards, traps, physics, like there is mechanics like pushing that can be incredibly useful. So there is so many things happening in, in the level design aspect. I'm not saying one game is better than the other, but this is a very strong focus. And this is what the test is asking you. 
at this precise moment, a combat encounter. Yeah. And then another thing that they do is to test your knowledge of D&D is that they ask you, they might, this might not be the case, but they ask you specific D&D questions. For example, if you had a class that you always dreamed of, you know, create a new class for D&D right so what does that class do and what is the progression of that class and what is the stat growth of that class and what are the abilities of so you need to know dnd by heart you know you need to know dnd incredibly well so these are like this is a test this is i thought it would be like a cute video to watch it's interesting that how how much they ask for their this like of their designers and i can say that the people i interviewed were fantastic and they all are so passionate about the CRPG genre. They cannot think of anything else, which shows. It really, really shows. But the, also the, the designers, the RPG designers, at least they're incredibly senior individuals. Uh, they work directly with the director. It's, it's, the communication is very direct and the structure is very flat. There is not that much progression in Laria, which is not a bad thing. It's not a bad thing. It means that people in there are not pursuing just the promotion. They are focused on developing to their best of their abilities, the best game that they can. So in conclusion, this is the test. In my experience, I wasn't knowledgeable enough to, to pass it. As much as I love RPGs, I really do. I am not a jack of all trades and I don't have the information they need. They needed someone that was not an art, just an RPG fan, that was a D&D &D fan. Someone that plays actual D&D, that DMs constantly, that reads about D&D, that knows about class in D&D, and that dreams about writing their own D&D. &D. Or they do. They already write their own D&D, &D, which is not what I do. It's not the, the thing. If they were looking for a combat designer and someone that is more focused to combat or something like that, I might have fared better, but Jack of all trades is not who I am, or at least not in the RPG form. Also, my experience has been in first-person shooters, stealth, and real-time combat, and systemic design, but in real time, not turn-based. Systemic design, but in something more similar to Metal Gear, and less similar than, like, a CRPG like Baldur's Gate. So I, uh, I, I, I really, I really appreciate the opportunity that Larian gave me of doing this test. I think it was one of the most interesting experiences I have looking for a job. You know, it was amazing. It was amazing, but it was a tough test. The test written is eight pages, and my test delivered was twenty between twenty to twenty-five pages without the questions. So it was just written twenty to twenty-five pages. It was it's a difficult test. They give you a limited amount of time, but they are very flexible. They tell you that you have I think they gave me two weeks but you can ask for more time they understand that you work and that you have a life outside of this so they give you more time if you need it and you don't need to pass every single aspect but you need to be incredibly good in one and good enough in three out of five so it's still you need to be a jack of all trades that's the reality anyway again I cannot show it directly I hope you guys find this interesting this is one of the things that we want to show I've done many tests in the industry many many tests uh, tell me if a studio you like western uh, if it's western better but i might not know some people that might have applied or might have gotten a job in another studio that did a test and we can keep talking about this process right what is it how is it to be hired or going through the process of getting a job in the game industry this is santi this is the game design perspective like comment subscribe tell me if you enjoyed it hopefully it was interesting and have a good one peace